welcome to the Sunday Sports Show here from Dublin City TV's Temple Bar Studio. Uh, I'm Brefney Early. And I'm Claire Keogh. Thanks for joining us. Coming up on this week's show, we've got women's rugby. Uh, we're going to be getting the girls of Railway Union Hockey Club, Irish Senior Cup and League double winners to dish the dirt on their teammates. And we've got the roundup of a very eventful week in sport. It's been a pretty busy week. Lots and lots of stuff to get through over the next half hour on the show. The weather was fabulous today, wasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And your time was not, lovely. And I'm not sunburned for the first time in about three weeks. What's up first, Claire? Yes, coming up first, I headed out to the National Aquatic Centre in Blanchestown for the National Championships with Swim Ireland. We're here with Sarah Keane, CEO for Swim Ireland. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us. It's a great event here. Yeah, this is our second or third time that we've run the event to this standard. It's actually the uh, 10 year anniversary of the facility and our long course championships. So particularly exciting this year. And we have a, a lot of swimmers looking to qualify for world championships, world university games, junior championships. So there's, you know, there's a hype, there's a buzz, there's just an activity around it that's it's exciting for everybody. It's great to see the swimmers supporting each other, running back and forth, watching each other, seeing do they get their PBs and condoling or you know, congratulating them. It's a great atmosphere tonight. I think one of the big things about our sport is that it's an early to mid specialisation sport, which means that from a young enough age, the, the guys who are committed are doing a lot of time in the water, which means that the friends and the coaches, they all become part of the family, so they have an additional family, and from that perspective, therefore, they take the bond that they, that they grow in their teens on and for the rest of their lives, so they really make friends here, that, and, and they do things that will ultimately impact them the rest of their lives, so from our perspective, you know, it, it is about training hard, it's about committing yourself, it's about working hard, it's about trying to be the best you can. But ultimately, it's about fun and friendship. So, who's been keeping an eye on for you? Can you keep the eye on in particular? Now, I know it's difficult for you. You can't have favourites and such. I think at this meet, this weekend, I think Barry Murphy and Fiona Doyle. She's home from Canada to compete in the 100 breaststroke tomorrow night. I think they're really looking at trying to qualify for the World Championships. And I think there's a lot of up-and-coming kids that are really good. I think athletes I work with on a regular basis. We have Brendan Hyland broke an Irish senior record and Irish junior record tonight. And um, there's loads of kids like that. Andrew Megan swimming real well, breaking Irish records. Uh, Brendan Gibbons and Turner, Irish junior record. So there's plenty of younger guys out there making that step up. But I think at the senior end this weekend, it's... I think it's really about Barry and Fiona and trying to help them get across the line for the World Championships. So, apart from the swimmers themselves competing today, there seems to be a huge network of people around supporting them and having a chat with them on the side of the field. Yeah, well, I think it's, it's important when, when athletes and young athletes put so much into the sport that we do have this, uh, proper support structures around them. So, in addition to myself and my full time coaching role, we do have a coach support team. I have a coach that works for me in the centre, Peter O'Brien. Strength and conditioning coach Noel Murphy, a physiotherapist Sarah Jane McDonald. We do have a responsibility when we're going to ask them to train 20 hours a week that we make sure we keep them healthy outside the water as well, make sure that their bodies, while they're growing and developing, are being looked after and given the time and space to grow into the, the adults that they're going to become. On top of that, as well, you've got to put the support structures around them so that academically they're able to put themselves in the right place. A lot of these kids are in school, it's a huge time commitment that they put into swimming, but stuff in the classroom has to come first and they have to be able to get out and get a really good leave and start to get into the courses that they want. So we have really good ties with the Irish Institute of Sport just next door to us here and their, their you know, talent support system around in Ken Lynch in particular that really helps the kids who are in school and in college manage their time, plan ahead of time if there are any classes coming along so that they can be quick in the pool but also be successful in the classroom as well. The Olympics are great. Um, the atmosphere was great. You know, I was a bit disappointed with how I for it personally, but it was my first game, so it was all just a learning experience. And, you know, uh, if I keep going for Rio, then I'm just heading up. And believe me, you can speak with the rest of your country. Yeah, that's the plan. I should have been freestyle as well. I started freestyle over in London. Um, to bring the 50s in, I might you know, try out the L50 fly as well. I'll try to that too. So. Hey, man, uh, butterfly. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Butterfly. Um, yeah, you can do it all. Whatever's coming, you know, we'll take care of it. Thanks, Gillian, for joining us. Congratulations on supporting us. How'd you feel? Um, thanks. It's really just, it's really good to be here. So um, yeah, I love racing at uh, Irish Nationals. It's always great, great fun, great atmosphere. Um, I had a good uh, 100 meter freestyle this morning, um, and then I swam the 400 in individual medley as well. Uh, so yeah, it, it was a good day. Um, there's there's little points to brush up on training, I guess, but you know, it was good. Thanks to all the coaches going around giving everybody pointers and tips and everything. 
a great operation that they've got going here. Uh, yeah, definitely. Like my coach Bobby, he's always down the post side and um, telling us what we should and shouldn't do, especially before and after the race. So yeah, no, it's great. Um, and all the coaches are here doing exactly the same for their summer. You've just set your own record and you're going to the national record. How does it feel? Yeah, it's great. Uh, delighted. I've been training hard all year and that's great to get a record. Want to get off? Yeah, yeah. Again? <laughs> Switch training. Came up here, started doing a few sessions a week with the high performance team lately and it seems to be working. I've been doing that since Christmas so it's great to get. Well, no, the time was from a few years ago, but it's the fastest I've gone in a few years, so I'm delighted with that. Yeah, I've got the 400 freestyle tomorrow, I've got the 200 freestyle on the relay tonight, and then I've got the 200 IM on Sunday. So, a few more events to go, yeah. Uh, hopefully alright, like both the swims so far have gone okay, so I'm looking forward to it, hopefully it'll be okay. We're very lucky to have snatched for a moment um, Tinka Hossu, the international champion, world champion and European champion record holder. And you've just gone and won a 400 IM as well. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was able to win tonight. Um, it's my 4.38. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this time for right now. We are in season, we are in training. So that was definitely a good time. And I'm, I'm looking forward to improve for world championship this summer. How did you get on today? I did well, I did well. I qualified for Worlds in Canada in the summer, so I'm very excited for that. And I got a bronze medal in the final, so. Oh, super, congratulations. It was good. Brilliant. It was a good swim. And how did you find the Paralympics? So you were over there competing as well? I was, yeah. We were over there for about four weeks, and it was great. There was a great atmosphere, and everyone was cheering each other on. We felt like such a family, so oh, I brilliant. loved it. And it was my first one, and I was quite young. I was only 16, so it was good. It was incredible. Fair play to you. Best of luck tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for chatting with us today. Uh, it's a fantastic event you've got going here, the National Championships at the National Quarter Centre. No, it's a great event. I mean, our national championships are key to us because it's important to get all the athletes in the country in the same venue. And we try to showcase our events because it's important that the general public, that it's just the swimming public, gets to know what's going on in the swimming. And uh, that's important. We always, we always make our athletes common competed. So anybody who wants to compete at the international level has to show up to the same. So that makes it that all the best athletes in the country are here this weekend. And that's important And we see how they're doing, we see how their training's going, we see how they're, they're competing. Some of them are trying to make championship teams, either the World Championships, World University Games, and the, or the European Juniors, the European Youth Olympics. So there's a lot of competitions out there that they're trying to make. And it brings a little bit of excitement to the event. And we're, again, excited to have all those athletes trying to swim faster. And they are swimming faster. So uh, swimming is about, you know, in my, my part of the sport as, as high performance director, it's about trying to get the swimmers to swim the fastest they possibly can and swim better than they've ever done before. So, there's uh, lots of international swimmers here providing the motivation, I suppose, for them to achieve their PBs and yeah. to really add a little extra drive in the pool. Yeah, well, I think that's one of the things we've right? We've got such a great facility, it's probably one of the best facilities in Europe. And, and for swimmers to come here from other countries and compete with us gives us the opportunity to race against better opposition. So we don't have to, have to go somewhere to compete, so it doesn't cost us money to go somewhere. So we get them here, it helps us compete better, and then they're amazed when they come and see this facility. So the strategy going forward is to try and have this competition a more open international event, so we can get more swimmers like Katina Hosu and the Egyptians and the swimmers from Great Britain to come in and swim in this event and make it a, a more a world-class event. To this. So that's really going to help swimming and promote swimming. And a big thank you to Swim Ireland for giving us access all areas there for the National Swim Championships. It was an absolute pleasure to meet them all and to witness such superb performances there. They've made huge progress over the last couple of years though, haven't they, at Swim Ireland? Well, I think when you compare it back to, say, 18, 20 years ago when we didn't have a 50 metre pool in the country, we now have a number of them. Uh, but on top of that, we've got some really, really good athletes. And we spoke to some of the people involved in developing the, people, the, the top athletes at the top end of the sport, the likes of Peter Banks. The addition he's made to Swim Ireland over the last four or five years is huge. But I think Sarah Keane, who, who would have started that original interview, uh, I know you chatted her for yeah. a while, um, the progress that Swim Ireland have made as an organisation since she came on board, they, they've gone from maybe two and a half staff to where they've nearly got 20 staff now and across a whole load of different centres. They've got a high performance unit in UL, a high performance unit in Dublin and I think they're starting one up in Belfast as well but, but that's really, really come on in leaps and bounds. I know Paul Donovan who is there, uh, he's in charge of the high performance centre in Dublin where of course Barry Murphy who you were quite enamoured with um, 
he uh, he, he was actually wearing was wearing he was wearing yeah. togs and that despite what it looked like yeah it was an uh, interesting crop selective there <laughs> well you know that's what you, that's what you asked for in the edit <laughs> Claire but anyway moving swiftly on um, <laughs> yeah so the likes of Barry and uh, Sarika who obviously went to the Olympics last year. Both of them took home national titles at that event. Barry just missed out on qualification for the European Championships, but hopefully he'll get there in the end. Uh, Sarik is already qualified, so we'll be seeing more and more of them, as the likes of Andrew Megan, who's one of the up-and-coming athletes, and I would expect him to be there, thereabouts, come Rome, uh, come Rio, even in, in 2016. Uh, Bethany Firth, obviously, a Paralympic gold medalist from last year. Great girl, a fantastic swimmer, and really that whole side of the sport has come on in leaps and bounds too, due to, in no small part, the, the work of Dave Malone of Paralympics Ireland and Swim Ireland combined, coming together to do that, also based out of the, the NAC, Dave is. But uh, moving on, some fantastic things there uh, from, from Swim Ireland over, over the years. Yeah, an absolute superb team, both in terms of management and the performers. So we wish them all the best. Yep, uh, we're going to change our attention now for a second. And we're going to uh, take a look at what went on in Seapoint a few weeks ago. It was the Leinster Women's Rugby Cup Finals. And they were held uh, in Seapoint, as I said. There was success on the day for Railway Union, the Guards and Old Belvedere. But here, have a look at it for yourself. It's a massive day. It's massive when someone like Seapoint offers us all of their pitches and all of their facilities to run one of these events. Um, it gives great advertising to women's rugby. We were 75 years old uh, about three years ago. Uh, it was originally formed down in, down in Seapoint. Uh, it used to play in Sally Noggin and uh, we're now, we moved up here about 30 years ago uh, and we've been here since obviously. We just qualified uh, for the All-Ireland League three years ago. So we moved up from junior status to, up to the, the big boys. And the first year in the All-Ireland League, we came second in Division Three, so we moved up to uh, Division Two. We've been in Division Two for the last two years, so very pleased with that so far. So we're some of the new guys in the, in, in, in the All-Ireland League, so going from success to success. I joined them last September, and uh, they're a fantastic club. Um, there are three teams there, and uh, we train Tuesday, Thursdays uh, since last, I suppose, August, September. And today we were competing in the Leinster um, Ladies Senior Final against Galwegians, and we are delighted to say that we're Leinster champions. Yeah, it's a bit hard now. It's very tough being on the sideline and watching the girls, and you're just, you get, I think I get more nervous on the sideline, to be honest, than I do on the pitch. Um, so, look, it's just unlucky, you know. Playing for Ireland is amazing, you wouldn't give that up, but you'd love to be able to come back and then play for your club, so what can you do? I'm delighted for the girls, they work so hard, uh, training's been amazing, and they had to work very hard to try and get that win there today, which they did, so fair play to them. Uh, it's really good, it's just, it's different, because I've never been in this sort of a club where uh, it's, ad it's very much adults. Like basketball, Gaelic, there's a, lot, like, there's a huge focus on young kids, so it's nice to see that that focus is continued onto adults when it's, they're just starting up. Like it's been great to win these f few finals now this year, it's probably my most successful year playing sports, but it's just like two, get, two finals in one day for a, f a club in its first year of women's rugby is just amazing. Club rugby is fundamental, like that's where all of us started and for me, still going back to your club is, is a huge occasion and to be part of that is brilliant. Uh, you look at the likes of Railway Union, it's their first year involved and to have two teams and then two teams in finals is absolutely brilliant but that's a testament to them and the club and what they've totally embraced the women's game this year and I think if more clubs can build like that it will be successful for them. Railway Union are one of the great successes. Rain, Railway Union, IT, Carlo, Old Belvo are three of the huge big successes and Railway Union which didn't exist last year managed to make, they've won their league final this year and they've won both cups that they were in this year. They have um, a huge complement of players in their team and they're constantly recruiting and constantly working hard to get more and more people involved in the women's game. It has been building so it's not that it's a difference, it's just we're, we got to a point where things clicked and um, we have a great blend of youth and experience in the squad and I think that's key, you know, you have young exciting players coming in with a huge array of skills and then you have more experienced players like myself, you know, that just have that making right decisions at right times and just working together. Um, We've had consistency in coaches as well, which has been great. Philip Doyle is still there. Strength and conditioning was probably the key thing. I suppose last year against England, we matched them for 60 minutes. Um, it was 6 all after 60 minutes. And then those final 20, they just pulled away. And I think the scoreline kind of flattered them in the end. So I knew that we had the ability to beat them, but just that we had to be as fit and strong as them. And I think this year, we definitely like upped that and we have to up it again now. 
Um, well, I think all the games were, you know, each game was completely different. And as we kind of went on, suddenly we were out in Italy playing for a Grand Slam. And we didn't realise what, what we had achieved up until then. And I think, I don't think it still sunk in, to be honest, you know. The Italian game, it was messy, it was cold, wet, windy, you know, every bit of condition that you could think about it was there on the day. But we had to change our game plan and I think all the players really worked together and we stuck to it and got through it in the end. But it was um, just one of those days where you had to grind it out and we did. <laughs> it's actually impacted more on the junior level. I mean, there has been a huge surge in girls' rugby and under 18s rugby. So this will impact in the next couple of years into the women's scene that have been working Trojanly hard for the last few years, you know. When you're involved in something so long and you've seen progression year and year, you just, I said at the start of the campaign, while I'd love silverware, I never really kind of, I dreamt of it, but I didn't know whether I really believed that we would win it this year and the manner that we won it, I didn't actually know that it would happen this year. So for it to actually happen, it's been brilliant. Technically, um, I was born in Leinster, uh, in Kilkenny, but I grew up in, uh, in Limerick. Um, I've moved to Dublin for uh, study reasons to study physiotherapy in UCD, but uh, it's been a huge honour to be asked to be captain of any team. Um, oh, Belvedere are a fantastic ladies club, um, and today I was asked to, 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 I suppose, to be the captain um, in the Leinster Cup season. So we're delighted for everyone involved. There's so many people that have contributed to this team on and off the pitch. So today is a huge, huge honour for everyone involved. There is not much rugby up in Donegal, although there are a few teams setting up now. So, you know, there's a few underage teams coming through. We've got a Kenny here looking for having teams there as well. So it's great to see. Um, I started playing in Dublin. You know, there's a lot more teams down here, and I just by chance I kind of came across it and decided to give it a go. And I haven't looked back since, to be honest. Um, lucky I had the, a few of the catching and kicking skills from GA or from soccer, so that really helped me come into it as well. But uh, through good coaching, with my first year in Leinster, I then just quickly went up through. And you know, when you get onto an Irish team, it's hard to look back. The Olympics, the Olympics, and it's amazing. Um, not everyone is still able to go to the Olympics. Just it's sevens rugby you have to be very athletic to play sevens rugby it's a huge opportunity hopefully it will bring more girls into the game and then if they come in from that into 15s but at the end of the day it's still rugby and you still have to be able to play rugby so um, hopefully that they the girls that come in for sevens will get involved in the club game as well we've had uh, many teams many will be under nines tens elevens and we've had girls playing there but we haven't managed to form a women's team uh, from a, an executive perspective there was a decision made five years ago to try to start many, uh, women's rugby uh, and we haven't managed it yet because you really need somebody to champion uh, the cause and it needs volunteers, people uh, and we just haven't managed to get that, that set of key people in place yet so if there's anybody out there interested in forming a team up here we'd be very happy to support them and make facilities available. The first place to do is log on to the Leinster website. There's a link there that will tell you what to do. We'll get you in touch with Jenny Bagnall who's the, YD, the YDO who will tell you about how to set up um, a team. If you're local to the areas like Carlow, IT Carlow, Railway Union, give your club a ring and find out do they have a women's team. And if they don't, ask them why not. <laughs> Big year next year, your World Cup. So uh, looking towards that, I suppose, with the Six Nations before that next year. And while we'd love to defend that trophy and that's what we'd be going out to do, to win it once was tough. And I'm sure every other country would be looking to take it off as next year but we will be going out to win it um, obviously we will be looking probably at some squad development next year in Six Nations in advance of the World Cup so we'll have to reassess now after the summer and see where we're going with that and again a big thanks to all the team out there at the Women's Rugby Union Cup for having us along yep no a fantastic day's action um, Seapoint provided three pitches and they played four games across the day uh, Railway Union were probably the, the biggest winners on the day they won two of the, of the Cups but they didn't exist 12 months ago. So a brand new club and they've managed to come through and, and be very, very success, successful this year. They won one league and two cups this year, so fantastic achievement. Now they did pull players in from, from a few different sources, be it the university sector or whatever, but uh, fantastic uh, movement there for a club to, to come so far in, in a single season. Old Belvedere won the top honours on the day. Uh, they're obviously one of the strongest names in Leinster rugby over the years at men's level and, and at women's and very, very strong side and they beat Carlo IT in the final of that. A great game, great exciting game and uh, yeah, some really, really good action and some really, really nice people and of course we did catch up with the likes of Norris Stapleton and Fiona Coughlin off the international side. They're obviously not allowed to play at club level. Uh, great to see them along supporting yeah, well, the girls. Um, 
Nora's side, oh, she plays for all Belvedere, so it was all her teammates and all her friends that were playing there. Yeah. So she was out on the sideline roaring them. I don't know how she survived the, the game from the sideline. And then Fiona, of course, was there to present some of the awards. And she was, uh, yeah, she was very kind to have a couple of awards with us on the day. Really, really good. Well, speaking of um, Railway Union, we were out with them a couple of weeks ago and we caught up with a couple of the girls to get them to dish the dirt on the rest of their teammates. Check out our next Short Corners piece. Grace, you've got a great sense. Yeah, Grace. Yeah, yeah. Grace. Yeah, Grace. <laughs> she always looks well. Style shines through. Yeah, it was be. Zara. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh no, Luigi. Luigi. Zara. Zara definitely. Zara definitely comes out. Even though she's a teacher, she's a primary school teacher. Sorry. Oh yeah, Zara. At one stage said that um, eating toast as opposed to bread made her skinnier than. <laughs> this is this is who we're entrusting the children of the future. Nation. Yeah. Okay, done. <laughs> Well, we hope that answers all your queries and all your questions that you may have had about the girls' team there. And Grace O'Flanagan, certainly taking a fashion relay to a whole new level, I'll never feel bad about being late again. Four hours four late hours. for a party, yeah, fair play. Um, <laughs> no, we had a great day. Uh, obviously, we ha had a feature on them a couple of weeks ago. We had a great day out uh, shooting them at a training session just before the, the Irish Hockey League started, about, well, probably about six weeks ago now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we've started that little uh, habit where we grab a few players and have a chat with them before we, uh, we get off and, and actually film the features. So I think we had the Olympic handball lads last week 
and there might be a few basketball ladies uh, on the show next week. But we'll uh, to be the devil's advocate on it, we'll have them all up online after the show during the week. So you'll be able to share them round. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> They'll all be on the YouTube account. Just so, in case uh, anybody missed them. Yeah. So no, no, there's, there's some really really good stuff coming up in the next few. Different people interpreting different the same question in completely different ways, mm. which is which is quite fun. Top scorer, perhaps, on and off the field? That one definitely... It's an interesting <laughs> yeah, one, yeah. Definitely got a good <laughs> laugh on a couple of the, the sessions. But, uh, obviously, it has been a very, very, very busy week on the sporting fields across the city and across the country. Uh, there were a couple of games which were too late to include in our uh, sports roundup, which is going to kick off in just a couple of seconds. But uh, congratulations to Orla Barry, the Paralympic athlete who threw a new world record, a provisional world record this afternoon in, I think it's the F57 class in the discus. Uh, congratulations to Orla. She's one of Ireland's most experienced, experienced Paralympians and hopefully we'll try and feature her on the show. I'm sure there'll be a couple of drinks had in Cork this evening to celebrate her success. Also in action today, the cricketers, uh, after having a very, very good draw against Pakistan earlier in the week, they lost today by two wickets and will and lose the series 1-0 overall. So a hard look to Kevin O'Brien and the boys uh, in the Irish jerseys today in cricket. But there is success around the corner for those lads. They are a very, very committed bunch of players. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Colleen Duffy to run us through the classified scores for the weekend. Thanks, Breffney. And to rugby first, where Joe Schmidt got the perfect send-off yesterday evening in the RDS as Leinster once again claimed Rabo Direct Pro 12 honours following a 24 points to 18 win over Ulster. Tries from Shane Jennings and Jamie Heaslip in that particular game. Ruan Pinar with all of Ulster's scores, six penalty kicks. Moving to the Airtricity League then, where in the Premier Division, St. Patrick's Athletic were 2-0 winners over Bohemians. Away from home, Bray Wanderers claimed a 3-2 win over Drogheda United. It finished one all between Derry City and Cork City, while the students of UCD claimed a 3-2 win over Dundalk in Dundalk. It was nil all between Limerick and Sligo Rovers, and Shamrock Rovers got the better of Shelburne in the Dublin Derby by one goal to nil. Moving to the first division then and Waterford claiming an away victory. 1-0 it finished against Athlone Town. Also away wins for Salt Hill Devon and Longford Town. Both by two goals to one over Cove Ramblers and Murphy United respectively. Longford table toppers of course. David O'Sullivan was man of the match in that particular game. He's top scorer in the league so far also with 12 goals. Meanwhile it was Wexford who claimed a 2-1 win over Donegal side Finn Harp. Turning to Gaelic Games then and in the Leinster Senior Football Championship round one of course Shane Lennon and Brian White bagging 1-11 between them all bar 5 points of Loud's tally in their 1-16 to 1-6 win over Leash in Port Leash this afternoon Park McMahon with a goal 10 minutes from the end for the hosts while Wicklow dug out an impressive 2 point win over Longford in the end it finished 1-15 to 16 points win in Ockram. And in Connacht, what a victory for London. There will be no cows milked in London tonight, that's for sure. It finished with a one-point win in the end. Their first win in the Connacht Championship in 36 years. It was London, 112, Sligo, 14 points. Mark Gotcha, the man of the match in that particular encounter in a game where Sligo native Park McGoldrick was sent off for London close to the end. Meanwhile, All-Ireland champions Dunny Gall got their campaign off to a winning start goals in either half ensuring a 2 10 to 10 points win over Tyrone and in Munster two comfortable wins as expected Cork claiming a 3 17 to 8 points win over Limerick last night and this afternoon it finished Kerry 2 19 Tipperary 8 points And in hurling then, the Christie Ring semi-finals quickly after extra time. They'll still have to play it again next week in Nuri. It finished Mead 125 down 222 and 15 points for Stephen Clinch of Mead in that game. Kerry 114, Kildare 11 points in Tralee. Shane Nolan with the game's only goal. While in the Nicky Rackard semi-finals, substitute Lee Henderson scored 2-3 for Donegal in their 5-12 to 2-9 win over Monaghan. And Jerry Fallon bagged 130 in Ross Commons 328 to 14 points win over Tyrone. 
And finally, to local action then, here in Dublin, the Senior Hurling League underway. And in Division 1 yesterday evening, there was a 2.13 to 2.10 win for Vincent over Crave Kiran. And on Wednesday night, Crave Kiran were 3.11 apiece uh, draw with Luke and Sarsfield. Kula had a two-point win over Crumlin. Kilmacud Croaks were uh, 1.11 to 3.8 winners over Ballyboden and St. Enda's. Nafina had three points to spare in their win over Foggs. O'Toole's accounted for St. Vincent's and St. Jude's had an away victory by 114 to 12 points over St. Bridget's. Back to you, Breffney. And thanks very much, Colleen, for a pretty concise and uh, complete look at the scoreboard from the weekend. That's it from us from this week. Hope you enjoy the show. Yep, please get in touch online. Um, we're on Facebook and Twitter and at thesunnysportshow.com for more information. Yep, from myself, Breffney Early. And, and Claire. Claire. Yep. See you next See you week. Next week.